Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about SoFi Technologies, Tesla, and Palantir Technologies. In today's video, we will be analyzing a plethora of articles to where the first one is titled, SoFi Stock Alert, Oppenheimer Just Downgraded SoFi Technologies. So we're going to be going over their latest news updates, catalysts, how this downgrade is negatively impacting their overall share price, and where I think the share price could be in the near future. After that, we'll move on to talk about Tesla regarding how Tesla has extended their winning streak by causing the overall TSLA share price to increase rapidly over the last two weeks. We'll also talk about their charging station networks, which you all probably know that they've signed agreements with both GM and Ford, and I'm going to tell you how this could positively impact their overall share price even more during the future, or at least over the next few months. We'll be going over analysis from Morgan Stanley to determine on a per share price basis how much money this particular deal could increase their overall share price over the short term. After we talk about that, we will discuss the future of Tesla regarding their overall market share and how Bank of America is estimating that their market share will drop to around 18% by 2026 due to the increasing competition from other legacy auto manufacturers as well as newer electric vehicle startups that are starting to take hold, which is adding more competition to Tesla and the overall electric vehicle EV market. Lastly, we'll talk about where we can find the TSLA stock in the future, and if this is a good company to buy right now, I'll be adding my own analysis about what the future stock price of this company could be, as well as what the future holds for this company in general. Lastly, we'll go over and talk about Palantir Technologies regarding how there is two ways in which the PLTR stock could continuously trend upwards. And then I also want to comment on this gentleman's article, which I have talked about multiple times, because he was a naysayer on both Palantir as as well as SoFi, and it looks like he was dead wrong, which is exactly what I predicted. So it's really good to see the fruits of our labors actually coming through, where Palantir and SoFi, which are companies I've been reporting on for the last two years, are finally making big moves in the market just as I predicted. We'll be going over their latest news catalysts, updates, price targets, some recent contracts they've won, and what the future of this company could be. Lastly, we'll go and analyze a very bullish article regarding how this author believes that Palantir is still undervalued right now, so he gives his own price target about not only the fair value, but what this company should be trading at right now. Clearly, I'll also add my own opinion on this to determine whether it's hype or if it's actually legit, and we'll be going Going over the financial metrics that he uses as evidence. So for more videos just like this one on SoFi Technologies, Palantir Technologies, as well as Tesla, don't forget to go and annihilate that like button right now. Go ahead, do it right now. I'll click or tap it because it helps me out a ton, especially if you want more videos on any of these companies. Subscribe for more videos just like this one. Don't forget to become a member of this channel for as little as 99 cents per month because that's what keeps me here on YouTube. But don't worry, if you don't become a member, you're still going to get this content for absolutely free. And then lastly, I would love for you to comment down below your personal price targets on SoFi Technologies, Tesla, or Palantir Technologies, and tell me if you own these companies and if you want to see more videos on these companies. With that being said, I say let's jump right into today's stories. As you probably already know, SoFi Technologies is a fintech company or a financial technology company that operates as a digital bank, and they are absolutely primed for future growth. SoFi Technologies, ticker symbol SOFI, or SoFi stock, has recently been downgraded by Oppenheimer, and we'll discuss exactly why that is. This recent downgrade has caused SoFi shares to drop in their overall price, now trading at around $9.25 from their recent highs. Many bearish negative analysts believe this company could fall as low as $3 over the next 12 months, with one analyst saying that $2.50 is his personal price target on the company, while other analysts believe this company is set for future growth to achieve a $14 price point over the next year. But let's see what this Oppenheimer analyst has to say, because this was one one of the most recent price target downgrades that we have seen for SoFi stock. He currently dropped their overall outperform rating or a buy rating down to a market perform rating or a hold rating. And that essentially matches a lot of analysts saying to hold this company, but I would like to point out
point out that the majority of the 13 analysts who are covering this company actually say to buy this company and they don't say to hold this company. Meaning that there is more bullish price action left, which is very positive for the overall share price. Now, the author says that the analyst based his downgrade in their overall rating purely based on the overvaluation of SoFi stock. And he even quotes from a Seeking Alpha article, which says, and I quote, this downgrade is purely on valuation after what we suspect is a significant short squeeze on a likely bear thesis based on account changes away from fair value accounting, inflated assumptions by management, capital capacity, and worries about credit quality, end quote. Essentially, he's saying that the bullish positivity that we have experienced with the share price climbing by over 100% is mainly due to factors such as a short squeeze happening, overall positivity in the general stock market, as well as the hype behind this company right now. But he says this is not going to last long. And that's why he has downgraded the stock because he believes it is overvalued right now. Despite this downgrade, the Oppenheimer analyst still has high hopes for SoFi Technologies from now until 2024, and I have to agree with him on that. And the best part to me is that he actually upgraded his revenue estimates from $2.4 billion to $2.6 billion, which is very impressive. Meanwhile, Wall Street has estimates regarding their revenue of close to $2.48 billion. So this analyst is actually more bullish than Wall Street in general. So although he decreased his overall rating on the company, I actually have to agree with him considering that he lowered his rating according to the valuation of the company. It's essentially getting more risky and it's setting itself up for a massive pullback, which is why he now advocates to hold this company as of right now. And I'm going to have to echo that same sentiment. That's why shares are currently down around 6.6%. However, the SoFi stock price is still up around 103.5% year to date, which is exactly what I've predicted in previous videos. Essentially, if you would have bought this company a few months ago, back when it was cheap, you would be sitting on 103.5% gains as of right now. And for me, that's more than enough to now take profits from this company. I'm not saying to liquidate your whole position. I'm saying to slowly take some profits off the table so you can practice proper risk management. As of right now, I have around a 3% allocation to this overall company, and I don't anticipate to add to my overall portfolio allocation or portfolio weight until the stock price comes back down where I can accumulate shares at a cheaper price point. But until then, I'm going to let the company ride up as high as possible while I slowly take profits along the way without liquidating my entire position. But overall, I would say this is a very good news update for SoFi Technologies despite this overall downgrade because like the author said, as well as the analyst and myself, the future of this company still looks extremely bright, particularly as the company is going to enter into 2024 and at the end of 2023, they're anticipated to become profitable, which is going to act as another positive catalyst, lifting the share price even further upwards. So overall, I would actually say this is a positive news update despite the scary headline of a SoFi stock downgrade. Now let's talk about Tesla's winning streak, where it has surged by around 41%. Currently, Tesla has met my price target of $250 because they are now trading in their TSLA share price close to $255. Analysts on the negative end believe this company could fall to around $190 over the next 12 months, and we got a stock price upgrade for Tesla shares that we will talk about later in the video, which now goes to $335. Until Tesla actually gives us new projections for the their overall revenues, I'm going to hold this company as well until I can get some solid financials because according to current projections, at least over the next 12 months, this is a very solid price target. But until then, I would personally want to play it safe. But let's see how high Tesla could actually go. Recently, the stock slid by around 3.7% after increasing 13 days in a row by around 41%. This rally was essentially fueled by a plethora of multiple good news categories. Catalysts. That would include their deal and agreement with General Motors and Ford regarding how these companies can now adapt their vehicles to Tesla's superchargers. On top of that, the Tesla Model 3 sedans have become eligible for the full U.S. tax credit, which is very good, making these electric vehicles even cheaper, as well as the overall broader investment market which seems to look very positively on Tesla in particular, especially retail investors who are looking forward to their artificial intelligence as well as their future taxi service. 
But the good news doesn't start there because we have two analysts who have raised their price target on Tesla. We have an RBC capitalist analyst who is looking forward to their robo taxis and their further artificial intelligence self-driving vehicles, which could potentially equate to 70% of Tesla's value with these two things combined being their robo taxis and their self-driving cars. Another analyst is even excited about the broader stock market shift toward Tesla and the overall positivity in North America regarding how Tesla is such a good investment over the long term and it is a very fundamentally stable company according to experts and this is just fantastic news. But what's so great about Tesla's charging station? Well I'm glad you asked because Morgan Stanley recently crunched some numbers regarding their charging station and their overall charging network because if Tesla becomes the dominant charging network in the United States becoming the new standard this is going to reflect very positively on their overall share price. So I want to actually dive in to how this could possibly impact their share price by using data data from Morgan Stanley and specifically from analyst Adam Jonas. And from this analysis, we have four main scenarios. We have the reasonable case, the plausible case, the dominant case, and the monopoly case. Each of these getting even better depending on what assumptions we make. Let's say Tesla assumes a 10% EV miles penetration with a few other minor assumptions. What would this mean? Well, essentially this would lead to a $3 increase in the overall share price. So nothing too impressive for this year at least. However, the plausible case Case, assumes 20% electric vehicle miles penetration, which would increase the overall share price by $14 per share on top of what they're trading at right now. So we would have to add $255.14 to arrive at $269 per share, but that's not all. I think Tesla is either going to achieve the dominant case or the monopoly case, which these would assume anywhere between 30% to 50% EV miles penetration in this market, increasing the share price by $33 to $78. If we take this at face value, we would have to add $255 plus $33, giving us $200 $88, which means that's what the company should be worth at least right now based off these projections. However, the monopoly case is even better because we would add $255 to $78 coming in right under the analyst's price target that we are about to talk about who has a $335 price target, which is exactly what you saw earlier. So now let's jump right into that story. The future of this company looks very, very bright. And the best part is the share price can continuously increase. For instance, an analyst analyst from CGI Securities has a $335 price target and they updated their overall price target recently, mainly due to the robo taxis and the artificial intelligence technology that Tesla is capable of. However, there are lower price targets such as Morgan Stanley who has a $200 price target, but overall this is phenomenal news for Tesla, which is just going to add to the overall bullishness of this company increasing their overall share price because they've already been on an absolute tear, jumping by around 137 percent five percent. Lastly, let's talk about their future dominance in electric vehicles. Bank of America actually has estimates saying that the company's dominance will fall to around 18% by 2026, but they will still be the dominant leader in this overall space. To put this into perspective, Tesla had around a 62% share of the overall market according to Bank of America in 2022, and they had a 78% market dominance in 2018. However, according to the future projections and competition that Tesla is going to be receiving from legacy automakers as as well as new electric vehicle startups, that dominance will fall down to around a market share of 18% by 2026. Now, the good thing is that the overall market is actually increasing, even though Tesla is losing some market share, it's growing so rapidly that Tesla will actually still be making loads of revenue from this. So although competition is increasing, Tesla is not at risk of losing out to any of these other companies. So this clearly sounds worse than it actually is. So I would love to hear your thoughts down below about that regarding Bank of America's overall estimates. Lastly, let's talk about Palantir Technologies, ticker symbol PLTR, which is a big data and analytics company that serves both commercial enterprises and government clients. Currently, the share price has surged to around $16.57, while negative analysts believe the company could fall down to around $5, but surge up to around $18, according to more bullish positive analysts. Palantir Technologies has captivated investors as well as analysts lately. However, I personally am scared that this company will pull back. 
If you already have a position in Palantir Technologies, feel free to ride this very bullish momentum and remember to take profits periodically along the way so you are not caught off guard and this will allow you to actualize your profits lowering your overall risk. Now if you're looking to get into this company, I personally would wait for these shares to pull back first. And the reason why the shares are surging in the first place is due to a plethora of news catalysts. We've already gone over how they have expanded their partnership with Jacob Solutions. They signed a multi-year partnership with Panasonic. They signed a $463 million contract with the U.S. Special Operations Command. And they also have gotten themselves very good publicity through artificial intelligence. Now, the author of this article says that there is no guarantee of a pullback, which I adamantly disagree with. We don't see shares or stocks surge this much without an inevitable pullback. This is just classic investor psychology. Although I personally don't know when that pullback will be, that's exactly why I am periodically taking profits on the way up. So when it does pull back, I'm going to use these profits and reinvest it back into this company at a lower share price, not only lowering my overall risk, but also my overall cost basis. However, if you already have a low cost basis and you are extremely green, feel free to just hold this company for the long term. However, I would not buy this company at these high prices. I would much rather just wait, sit back, enjoy the gains, and wait for the company to achieve a cheaper share price. Lastly, I want to talk about a price target from this company by this author who believes the company is currently 20% undervalued right now. So let's see what he has to add about this. Palantir has surged by around 140% year to date, meaning that all of my top picks, SoFi, Palantir, and Tesla have all surged more than 100% just as I predicted. Even though my top picks and my top investments are, again, VTI, SCHD, and QQQM. Those are my top investments. So always make sure to feel free and do research into those ETFs as well. However, I do like how the author correctly points out that Palantir has loads of cash on hand around $3 billion. They have a very strong balance sheet. They are anticipated to weather any storm that the economy could throw at them. So even if we were to go into a recession or a stock market crash, fundamentally Palantir would remain the same. Clearly, I do think it's going to negatively impact their overall share price, but overall, as a company, they are not at risk of going out of business in the slightest. Now, I do also like how the author points out the seeking alpha quant rating, which has a low rating on it, meaning that this company actually has no upside left. Just look over here on the left side of your screen. These are not very positive ratings. The only good rating they have is their PEG or PEG non-GAAP on a forward basis. And I would actually have to agree with this quant chart saying that Palantir trading at around $16 to $17 right now is really divorced from the overall fundamentals projections and metrics we've received from various forecasts due to professional analysis. However, the author says that to perform this type of analysis that I am doing is unfair on the company due to Palantir being a growth company in his view. However, he tries to back this up with a 20% CAGR regarding the revenue growth from now until 2027. And I do think the company will achieve a 20% CAGR or a 16 to 20% CAGR regarding the revenue from now until 2025. And that would very positively impact their overall share price. I do don't think this is a sustainable CAGR from now until 2027. However, if his assumptions are right, I would agree with him that the company would be undervalued because it should reflect their overall growth rate, but I think he's overestimating the amount of growth that Palantir could actually achieve. In the end, we can both shake hands on this company saying that Palantir is a very fundamental company, it has a huge potential future upside, but I really don't want people investing into this company when the share price is unnecessarily high. He says the company currently is 20% undervalued right now, meaning that there is plenty of upside opportunity, but regardless, I personally own this company and if he's right I'm going to make even more profits from this company however if I'm right it's going to allow me an opportunity to buy these shares at an even cheaper future valuation. In the end the author believes that Palantir is a strong buying opportunity for me again I would say this is a holding opportunity right now until we get more guidance on their future revenues and future earnings. But with that being said I would love to hear your thoughts down below on Tesla, SoFi, and Palantir Technologies. Don't forget to go and annihilate that like button for some fair analysis on these companies in the future. Subscribe if you are new. Don't forget to become a member of this channel for as little as 99 cents and I will see you in the next YT video.